Hey, what's up? This is Brian with AdSpend.com and in this video, I'm going to be giving you a behind the scenes look at a presentation I gave last week on Friday for my good friend Rudy Maurer's mastermind where I shared with his mastermind exactly how our agency helps our clients book up to 30 highly qualified sales appointments each week using our YouTube ads intent based validation targeting strategy. So if you're someone who wants to learn how to book more leads on your calendar that can convert into high ticket clients for your coaching course, consultant, or even, you know, agency, uh, and business, then this is the perfect video for you. All right. In this video, I'm going to give you everything from A to Z. And this is stuff that I've really never shared online before. So uh, make sure to take out a pen, take out a paper, take some notes, because this will be a very tactical training that you can use to start booking your calendar with qualified appointments each week, even if you've never ran YouTube ads before. And even if you're starting off with a small budget. All right. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and uh, get to the presentation. Got Brian here. Obviously, been a as I told a lot of you on the Wednesday call um, and in the Facebook group. He's been a friend for many years and uh, seen him grow and run a lot of the big guys YouTube. Um, and obviously, we we teach a little bit around it. But I wanted to bring him on as he's managing a lot of spend and helping a lot of people and has learned a lot over the years working with you know Tony and a lot of the big uh, Russell and all the big guys. Obviously, Dean. Um, so, Brian, do you want to do a bit of a, I'll let you take the reins and, and sit back. I'll let you do a bit of an intro and maybe discuss what you're going to talk about today. And then I'll let you dive in with the training and we'll finish with some Q&A. Yeah, appreciate it, Rudy. Thank you so much again for having me. What's up, everybody else who's joining us? I'm excited to be here. Like Rudy said, been friends with him for a few years now. Uh, awesome dude. And yeah, I basically got my start working full time for Dean Graziosi in-house in his business. Uh, helped him scale his companies and his brands with YouTube ads, which is exactly what we're going to go over in this training. And I'm going to share exactly what I've used to help other big names like Rudy mentioned, which I'll go over here in a second, to get highly qualified clients, you know, closing uh, on their calendar from sales calls with highly targeted YouTube ads. So um, with, if that's it, I can go ahead and dive right yeah, in and start sharing Brian, tactics. And I think what would be good too is just the psychology behind the steps because you know not everyone's in mm. different spaces so if people yeah. are in e-com or they're coaching and consulting or fitness just kind of understanding mm -hmm. why you're doing each phase and how you're structuring each uh thing and then everyone mm -hmm. regardless of where they're at will get some great takeaways but yeah, yeah with that being said let's not waste time i'll let you dive in and we'll pin you and uh tom and emma will handle q a at the end i'm going to sit back and watch but appreciate it and excited <clears throat> Sounds good. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Here we can. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in, guys. So like Rudy mentioned, how to book 30 highly qualified sales calls each week with YouTube ads. I'm going to explain everything. And the method here is going to be intent-based validation. So you're going to learn exactly how to start. Even if you've never ran YouTube ads before, regardless of what industry you're in, I'm going to give you the full A to Z blueprint. All right. So uh, with that said, let's go right into it. Here's what we're going to cover. Number one, why most people fail with YouTube ads and how to start advertising on YouTube the right way so you can avoid uh, spending tons of cash and wasting tons of time with little to no results. Number two, how to create highly profitable YouTube ads that are going to convert like crazy, uh, which I'm going to give you the updated guidelines on responsive ads, uh, which is a new update that I'll talk about shortly. Uh, how to use intent-based validation to target your most ideal customers first. This is our agency's secret weapon to getting our clients really great results, including five to seven X return on ad spend, even if they've never ran YouTube ads before by targeting their most ideal customers. And then finally, how to optimize, broaden, and profitably scale to six figures per month with YouTube ads. So here's a quick one minute intro. I know I kind of already touched on this, but uh, I'm the founder of adspend.com. We are an advertising agency that specializes in helping online education businesses that sell coaching, consulting courses, scale with hyper-targeted YouTube ads. All right, I've worked with and consulted with some of the biggest names in the space, Dean Graziosi, like we mentioned. Uh, I worked full-time for him. Uh, Frank Kern, Jordan Belfort, Bedros Koulian, Digital Marketer, Kajabi, and a, a lot of other people. Uh, we manage about 1.62 million a month in YouTube ads traffic right now, and we are a certified high-roast agency, okay? So 
here's why most people fail with YouTube ads, right? So let's say you're not running YouTube ads right now, but you want to start generating more leads, more traffic, and you want to start advertising on YouTube because your Facebook ads performance is declining, or maybe your campaigns are dying, or it's just getting more expensive for you, right? And you want to start running YouTube ads. Great option. Well, here's like the upside down triangle of what really matters when it comes to YouTube ads and really just any ad platform in general, right? And Rudy's probably touched on this a lot for you guys, but 80% of your results depends on these two things right here. Okay. Offer packaging and positioning and creative, right? If your offer is not dialed in, it's never going to work with YouTube, which means you already have to be generating results in, in terms of sales, right? Organically, you have to have an offer that's converting if you want to scale it with YouTube ads in this case, right? And then the second reason why is creative, right? If your creative sucks, meaning your video is not interesting, not engaging, not attention grabbing, right? It's just never going to get clicks, which is never going to get you calls booked, which is never going to get you clients, right? And I'm going to go over exactly how to create good ads, right? High ROI ads for YouTube in this presentation, right? Unfortunately, most people blame it on these two things, right? Oh, the targeting's off or the agency sucks. Honestly, you shouldn't even be working with an agency until you have these two things dialed in. All right. So 80% of your results depends on these two things. And the next reason why most people fail with YouTube ads, because let's say they have the offer dialed in. Let's say you have an offer that's converting right now. You're, you know, making anywhere from 30 grand a month and above, right. And you want to start scaling with paid ads. Um, the worst thing that I can see you do is then do what some clients actually come to us and do. And they say, I want to run the same YouTube ad. I want to run the same, you know, one minute video ads that are crushing on Facebook, on YouTube. I don't want any new creatives. I don't want to pay for any of that stuff. I just want to use the same funnel that's working on Facebook, right? This is what's called copy and paste syndrome, right? They use the same funnel on Facebook and they try it on YouTube and it doesn't work because it's a totally different platform, right? And I'll go into the psychology of why in a second. Or you use the same one minute video ads on Facebook. And they don't work on YouTube. Why? Because they're optimized for Facebook, right? Or they use the same Facebook ads agency to run their YouTube ads, right? It's another reason why they don't get results because they're not well-versed in YouTube ads. It's a totally different platform and it requires a totally different strategy. Okay. So here's the difference, right? YouTube, and I compare this very easy to understand. You want to imagine YouTube to be like college, all right? Because people go to YouTube to learn or to be entertained right? The people watch YouTube videos to learn things or to be entertained. Like, think about it. When's the last time you went to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and you typed in, you know, how to fix, how to replace your, your tire on your Honda Civic or how to change your oil or how to fix the sink, uh, you know, underneath your, how to fix your sink or like whatever the case may be when you're, oh, for example, me, right? I live in Miami. And so we have a bunch of plants in our, in our uh, apartment. I love plants. You know, plants are cool. But the problem with plants, especially in Miami, is it's humid here, right? So there's a lot of gnats that sometimes fester, especially if your plant already is, you know, toxic with gnats, which I learned happens. So I Google, you know, where do I go to find how to kill gnats? I don't go to Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. I go to Google and search how to kill gnats in my plants, how to get rid of gnats from my snake plants, right? And I'm sure you probably can relate to this because you go to Google or YouTube when you want to find answers to solutions. Your customers are doing the same thing on YouTube and Google right now. They're searching for solutions, right? And they also want to be entertained like this funny gif from Will Ferrell of uh, old school. If you guys have seen that video or that, that movie, I should say, very funny movie. But when you go to YouTube, it's basically like you're in a college hallway, right? In a building of a college hall, uh, college. And then on each of your left and your right, there are doors that you can walk into, or in this case, videos you can click on when you're on YouTube to go learn something. And then you can actually be this guy right here, learning from this presentation. Uh, there's this teacher in the front of the room teaching you something on the YouTube video that you clicked on because you want to learn something, right? Or you want to be entertained, right? Will Ferrell. So that's the difference. And that's why you're hearing YouTube is a really good traffic source right now, because the quality of customer or client or lead on YouTube is a lot higher intent. It's an intent based platform. People go there to search things, right? How to do this. What's the best, this reviews on this. And so you can show your ads to your most ideal customers. If you know how to create ads that convert and target them when they are searching for solutions, which we're going to show you how to do. All right. Make sense so far. Cool. If there's any questions, feel free to type them 
I can maybe go through them as we're going, but here is how to create the perfect YouTube ad script, right? The first goal, right? This is very, very, uh, I would, I'll say basic, I guess, maybe not, but basic because you have to hook your ideal client's attention, right? You have only, you have literally only like probably I would say 15 seconds now, especially this is maybe 15 seconds. I would just say, cut this in half. It's 15 seconds. And the goal here in the first 15 seconds of your YouTube ads script is to hook your ideal customer's attention while pushing anyone who isn't your ideal customer away. Okay. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a second. And you only pay when you watch 30 seconds, when someone watches 30 seconds or more, this has actually changed a little bit too. I say this here because you can still use what's called max convert, uh, max cost per view bidding, where you can still bid for people who only watch 30 seconds or more, but I'll show you a better strategy in a second. But the, the thing you want to realize here is you only have five seconds before someone can skip your ad, right? You guys know we, we skip ads all day long on YouTube. I mean, right. Who does it? So think about your ideal customers when they're on YouTube, right? If it's not attention grabbing in the first five seconds, they're going to skip. So what do you need to do? Do you have to be a dancing monkey? Do you have to do, uh, do you have to burn your, like burn something to get their attention? Not really. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that without having to be doing anything crazy to make sure that they actually continue watching. All right. But the next step is the story, right? So this is a framework. And I learned this from Dean Graziosi when I was working for him full time, All right? This is the same framework that he used to sell hundreds of millions of dollars online and on infomercials, right? Before there was even Facebook ads, YouTube ads, TikTok ads, Instagram ads. This is the same framework that he used, which is why we teach it to all of our clients as well. And why you should use it because he was able to do this with this same framework on infomercials. When people were walking across their TV screens, he had to get their attention with a powerful hook, right? And next was a story, right? A story. So this is anywhere from 30 seconds to about a minute, you know, minute and a half. Uh, and this concept I learned from Tom Breeze. He's another YouTube ads expert in the space. Really good friend of mine. Uh, he calls it edutainment. All right. Edutainment, education plus entertainment. People again are on YouTube to learn or to be entertained. So your video ads must be engaging and educational for the viewer. You want to teach them the what to solve their problems, right? Or show them the how, all right? Teach them the what or show them the how, all right? So that's the story. And then next is close, all right? You want to make the offer. So this is anywhere from two to three minutes and you want to tell them to click, okay? The goal of YouTube ads or any ad is to get them to click and go off the platform to your funnel, all right? So you have to tell them to click. And a great way to do this is to show them that once, show them where they will land once they click, right? So we actually have our clients show a B-roll footage of someone clicking on an ad like theirs and then going to their next landing page and entering their information to opt in or to check out if you're selling e-commerce or physical products, right? To show the viewer what the next step actually looks like to overcome skepticism, overcome, you know, those objections of like, I don't want to click because I don't want them to take my information or whatever the case may be. We show them the page they're actually going to land on. Right? It's very powerful. All right, so hook story close and the ads guys have to be less than three minutes. YouTube just updated this in December where they are essentially taxing ads that are higher or, or longer than three minutes, I should say, which means that you'll pay more and they'll perform less if your ads are above three minutes. And we're even seeing this with some of our clients accounts right now that we do for done for you, right? The old ads that were like almost VSLs, 20 minutes long that used to work. They're just not working as well anymore because YouTube is favoring three minute or less ads, right? So keep that in mind, which is why this framework is less than three minutes. Hook story close. All right. So here's exactly how you can do this right now. I'm giving you a template, right? You can make a big promise or claim, right? So for example, a big promise would be like the headline of this training, right? How to book 30 qualified appointments on your calendar every single week, guaranteed using this simple YouTube ad system called intent-based validation. That's a big promise. That's a big claim. Maybe you sell uh, a physical product, right? Where you're selling something that can help someone cure their acne, right? Uh, this simple, uh, this simple <laughs> uh, morning drink can help you cure your acne in 30 days or less, or you don't pay, right? You can kind of get creative here. You get where I'm going with this, make a big promise or claim, and then ask a question, all right? Ask a question. So this is pretty much correlated into this one as well. Like, are you someone who struggles with acne and you want to, uh, 
and you want to eliminate all of those red spots on your face that cause itchiness, dry skin, uh, so that you can, you know, show up to your school photos. It, you can kind of get creative again, but you want to ask a powerful question related to the problems that they want to solve, right? Their biggest pain point, their biggest frustration, something that's really bothering them. All right. Are you tired of not having any leads on your calendar every single week where one week your calendar looks like this, where it's packed the next, it looks like this, where there's none or worse. Like there's just nobody on your calendar booking calls, right? What if I could show you so you can see asking a question, right? Next is calling out your ideal customer or your client. Are you a, are you someone who's running Facebook ads right now? And you're spending at least $1,000 a day, but you're struggling to scale past that limit. And you're having trouble getting those low costs per acquisitions you once saw three months ago. All right, what if I could show you, and then you kind of go into the next one, right? So you can kind of combine these right here, which is why on this bullet point, I have combined either of the above. And then last one, this works really well for um, physical products and for um, like health and fitness offers, because you can actually act out a problem that your clients are doing. So one of our clients, the Tap Brothers, which I'll show you guys in a second, they actually were able to uh, show someone a push-up. And they're like, can you see the mistake I'm doing here, right? So they're acting out the push-up, and they're really getting their clients to, or the viewer to be like, huh, I wonder what he's doing wrong here. So he shows himself doing a push-up and saying, hey, can you see the mistake I'm making with this push-up? It gets people engaged, right? It sounds like YouTube allows you to call out a problem the customer's having, something Facebook frowns on. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually a lot more lenient right now, Dan. So this is still acceptable for YouTube, right? I think on Facebook, it's called personalized advertising, what they, which they uh, disapprove you for. So yeah, YouTube, you can still do that. Story, all right, now we got the hooks down, right? I gave you guys some templates here. Story, uh, social proof and credibility. This is where you come in and you show the viewer or the audience that you actually know what you're talking about. Okay, so at the beginning of this presentation, obviously I said, here, I'm... Um, the owner of, I'm the founder of uh, adspend.com. We worked with this name, this name, and this name. We spend 1.62 million a month on YouTube ads. That's the social proof. That's the credibility, right? You need to do the same thing with your YouTube ads, but you got to be quick about it, right? I was literally like 30 seconds and then I was done. That was it. I was like moving on to get to the problem and then the solution. It's the same thing for your YouTube ads. You want to give, you want to um, address their problems in the story and you want to give them a solution on the actual YouTube ad so they can, you can gain their trust, right? You show you're credible, you give them value, which makes it easier when you go to the close and you say, and if you want to learn more exactly how this works, then click the link on this YouTube ad, right? And you'll be taken to a page that looks like this, where you can enter your information and get access to a free training, get access to $50 off, whatever the case may be, right? So problem, right? Give them three problems or the biggest problem, right? And then you actually give them value on the ad. And then you move into the close. You give them a call to action, tell them to click. And then you can also, you know, show them where they're going to click, right? Which is giving them more urgency, scarcity, and a no risk guarantee. Yep. No problem, Dan. Cool. And uh, as a result, guys, I'm going to uh, give you guys the slides here. So, you know, don't worry about like taking notes. You can take notes. Obviously I would recommend that, but um, I'm going to give you guys the slides here as well, along with uh, a YouTube ads script and swipe file. Uh, so I'll give that to Rudy and Rudy's team uh, for free. You guys can take that and you don't have to worry about like coming up with a script on your own. Our script is like plug and play and it'll allow you to be able to um, write your scripts within like 30 minutes or less. And you'll have your first five YouTube ads ready to go as soon as you're done. So free gift there. Um, and that comes with the slides too. So, and the cool part about this is you want to use what already works, right? So you don't want to reinvent the wheel here with these scripts. So chances are you have some copy, right? that's converting on Facebook if you're running Facebook ads and you know this ad works on Facebook. So all you gotta do is just simply convert it to the hook story closed format that I just presented to you. And you can literally just film a video on your iPhone and it'll show you, right? Like uh, you can use the video script that's working on Facebook as a YouTube ad script and you can film it on your iPhone and chances are it'll work, right? Because it's proven to work on a platform like Facebook. Or even if you have email copy, let's say you sent out an email to your list and it's just got you calls booked or customers lined up at your front door banging, just saying, I want this, right? That's what you want to use to, you know, have a cheat sheet to writing your first YouTube ads, right? Just use what already works. Organic posts, competitor videos, those will give you good ideas too. Um, so steal your best converting copy that's proven to convert and then rewrite it in the HSE script format, hook story close. Quick follow-up, Facebook won't allow before and after. I sell lip balm, by the way, photos. Is that allowed on YouTube? Um, yeah, you just gotta be a little bit more, um, 
I mean, you can show, you can show transformations, but you just got to have a disclaimer on there too. So, um, I wouldn't really recommend like before and after right next to each other. I would recommend the before, right? Like in like one second and then a few seconds after you show the after. So it's kind of split up, right? I wish I had an example on this, but I hope that makes sense. Basically, yes and no. Um, so just show the before. I would just show the transformation, to be honest. I would just tell a story. So like if you have someone who has cracked lips in this case, right? Super cracked lips and then your product helps them you know, have smooth, luscious lips or whatever the case may be, I would just show the after and then uh, show a testimonial from someone that has a screenshot saying like, this lip balm helped me cure my dry cracked lips. I would just show that. So as opposed to showing a before and after. Is YouTube as strict as compliance on Facebook? No, no, they are not. Although it's getting a little bit more strict, but it's still pretty good. Uh, how to film your YouTube ads, all right? So let's say, okay, so just to recap, guys, we've went over why most people fail with YouTube ads, right? They use the same funnel, the same ads, and they're not tailoring it to the YouTube ads platform, which again, people are on YouTube to watch videos, to be entertained or to learn something, right? To grow, okay? So we also covered how to write your YouTube ads scripts to make sure that you actually get them to click and convert to a client, to a call, to a lead, whatever the case is that you're selling, right? So here's how to film your ads, right? Step one, you want to film the hooks first, okay? Ideally, film these in a setting where the viewer says these three things. And I learned this again from Tom Breeze, which I thought was very powerful, and I had to share it with you guys. I want to be him or her doing that and feeling that way. So this depends on the industry, obviously. Uh, like the easiest way to describe this is like, you know, the make money online niche, the biz op niche, right? Like there's a lot of people selling how to make more money online, how to get more money from uh, online businesses, how to start a business, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, more often than not, they're in a setting where the, the viewer, the average person says, man, that guy has a cool life. So you want to just take that idea and try to implement it with your hooks as well, or your script in general right? Show them the desire, right? By just the setting alone. So that's one way you can do it. So, you know, that's why people are like on the beach filming their ads, right? Or on a boat filming their ads or uh, at a luxury, like a, at a, you know, most sought after destination filming their ads. Cause the viewer is like, oh man, that looks pretty cool. I want to do that. Right. Again, this depends on the awareness level of your ideal customer, but regardless, you want to film the hooks first. So in that script template that I'm going to give you guys with the slides here, there's going to be five hooks that you're going to have already written for you. Once you're done going through the script, it's copy and paste simple. You'll have five hooks. You want to knock those out back to back to back to back to back. Cause those are easy. Those are like one, two, maybe three sentences max. So you want to film the hooks first. All right. And then you want to film the story in the close second. This is like the body. All right. The body of your script. And this is a little bit longer because it's anywhere from 30 to 30 seconds to three minutes. Right? So you want to film this in a different location that's relevant. So for example, if you're in an office, right, you want to then transition the body to an office setting. So it keeps the viewer's attention, right? It's doing two things here. Number one, it's keeping the viewer's attention than just being stagnant in the same setting. And it's also giving them a different setting. So it's keeping their attention. Plus it's positioning you now as more of an authority because you can film this in your office, right? Um, at the gym, right? If you're doing a fitness offer, like I said before, uh, at your warehouse, if you're selling physical products, right? Showing them where the product's actually at or being shipped out of, right? So you can get creative here. You don't have to do this, by the way. This is just my recommendations on really how to make your ads convert. And then finally, you want to have a good checklist before you film. So before you do any of this, you want to make sure that you film in a location that has natural lighting. This is one of our clients, Roland Frazier. Um, he's in a, he, he actually hosts a mastermind that Rudy and I are a part of called War Room. Um, and you can see here, he's actually filming his ad in a setting that has a lot of natural lighting, all right? Because again, if the lighting sucks and they can't see you, the quality of the video is going to be poor and they're not going to trust you as much, or it's just not going to be that good of a viewership. So it's going to, you know, hinder your performance of your ads. So we want to have natural lighting, right? Uh, next is an external microphone. You can see I'm filming this ad or I'm filming this, uh, this uh, presentation on a good external microphone, right? You can hear the quality is really good. And so when you're filming your videos, you know, you would really want to have like a, a task cam microphone, right? Something that can clip onto your shirt, just because you want to avoid like wind or, you know, sounds of like echo, stuff like that. So it's always good to have an external microphone and then teleprompter, right? This is because if you're going to use a script, right? Especially with the script template that I'm going to give you guys, you don't want to try to like memorize it word by word, line by line, and then just keep looking back from the script to the camera and then try to like memorize it on the go. It's just annoying. It's going to stress you out and it's just going to take forever. 
you want to use a teleprompter. And on these slides, guys, uh, you're going to be able to click this right here, and it'll take you to a teleprompter that we recommend. And you can just, you know, have your iPhone use it. It'll attach to a camera. You have to have a DSLL camera, um, but it works. So teleprompter is always recommended if you have access to one. Next is the post-production cheat sheet. So you film the ads now. Cool. Oh, actually, I think there's a question. Let me just go to this one first. Got it. Thanks. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, post-production cheat sheet. So you filmed your ads. Now here's the elements that you want to add to improve the conversion rate. All right. Here's what you, you should always have in your ads. Captions, because you know, people, their eyes are naturally going to gravitate to what's on the screen, right? So they're going to see you, but then they're going to, their eyes are then going to go down to reading the actual script, right? So their focus is on you and on the script, right? So captions are always proven to outperform videos without captions. We use all, we always use captions on our clients' ads, right? So you want to put those into the video. Don't wait for YouTube to uh, embed them. You want to embed them yourself, okay? B-roll, right? This is making sure that you're keeping attention of your viewer as well, right? You want to have B-roll, okay? So this can be you in your office, you working out, right? You in your warehouse, you doing stuff with your product or even clients, right? Uh, customers of yours, they can act as B-roll, right? Uh, motion graphics, right? This is basically like things flashing on the screen, like for example, testimonials, like you were asking earlier, Dan, about the before and after stuff with the lips. Like you can just have a customer screenshot of someone saying they love the lip balm, right? That's a motion graphic. Um, so pictures, right. Animations, uh, sound effects, right. So when you put a picture on the screen of, of a transformation, you can have like a little ding or like something that's like a, a cool looking sound. That's like a positive emotion when people hear it again, this is all just keeping the engagement of the viewer, keeping people watching, right. Keeping their entertainment, keeping them entertained, uh, background music. And you want to make sure the background music is tailored to the mood of the ad, right. And then in screen, okay. In screen is just where you have like 10 seconds of dead footage and it's just like waiting for people to click. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, cool. So here's how to know if your YouTube ads suck. So let's say you're running YouTube ads right now and you're like, Brian, I mean, I've tried YouTube ads or I'm trying YouTube ads, but I'm not getting any results. Well, what we're seeing right now is that 1% click through rate is like the bare minimum that we like to see across the ad account after launching. And if we don't get this with our clients at least to 1%, then we work the script, right? We work the hook specifically, right? Because we want to make sure that the ads are getting at least the 1% click through rate. Now, this again depends, right? So don't take this for like the Bible because you could have a point, like let's just say you have a 0.75% click through rate and you're getting cost, you're getting conversions that are on target KPI, which means that they're healthy for your business, you're making profit and everything's good, right? Then just like literally just ignore what I said, right? Because you're, you're profitable, the ads are working, but you're not getting a 1% click through, right? click through rate. You can always improve it for sure, right? Like you should aim to improve it, but if, you're, if it's getting results, again, it depends on the niche and the business, then that's fine, right? But just, you wanna use this as a guideline, all right? Use this as a guideline. One to 2% is really good, if we get one to 2% on any ad and the, the CPAs, meaning the cost per acquisition, right? The cost per sale are out of target KPI, right? They're not healthy for the business. They're not leading to profit that the client wants or that we want. Then we focus on optimizing essentially the funnel, right? Not just the landing page, but the funnel, because it could be anywhere in the funnel that needs optimize optimization. But if it's greater than 2%, right? Click through rate. And you get like, I just know right now, if you have a 2% click through rate, it's, it's usually not the ads. If you're still not, if you've got a greater than 2% click through rate and you're not getting good results, it's, it's your funnel, All right? The ads are getting clicks. So you can expect this ad too, to work for a very, very long time. And then here's a case study. So this is our, our clients, the tap brothers, All right? So they are in the, uh, body weight workout niche. They have about, uh, a million subscribers on YouTube, um, which is why their ads work so well. And you don't have to have a million subscribers on YouTube to get results with YouTube ads. I just want to show you the reason why this ad works so well, because this YouTube ad has been running, um, for two years, four months, and nine days. It's actually two years, six months uh, now, right? So I, you can see this says like one month ago, but it's, it's been a lot longer than that. So average click-through rate is 5%, right? Imagine having an ad that's getting a 5% click-through rate. Total sales close to 4,000. Cost per sale is 43 bucks. Average AOV is 52, right? So they're making profit on the front end. They're getting customers just for profit, and they're just adding to their database. Total revenue is about $200,000. For a $37 product, by the way, guys, $37 product. So that's a lot of sales for a $37 product and about 6 million views total. And so check this out. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this ad to show you why this ad worked so well, right? And I'm only gonna play like the first 15 seconds because that's that's what I want you to focus on. So let's go through it real quick. Hey, stop doing this exercise. This one popular exercise has been banned by the military, yet seven out of 10 people still use this in their workouts today. And it's unknowingly recommended by trainers and doctors all over the world. Even Tony Hor- Boom, all right. That's all I'm gonna play for you guys. <laughs> There's a lot that just happened in that first 17 seconds. If you guys want, comment in the chat right now on Zoom what you noticed about the ad immediately. Why did this ad work so well? Name one of the elements we talked about. Name one of the elements. B-roll. All right, B-roll, for sure, Emmy. Captions. I mean, Emmy's on a roll. Curiosity. Hook. Yep. Flawed approach. Oh, there we go. Intrigue. Yep. Let's see if we can get one more question. All right, perfect. Against the grain. Yes. Okay. So check this out. Let's just see why this works so well. Hey, stop doing this exercise. This Boom. Three seconds. Super good pattern interrupt. Hey, stop doing this exercise. He's getting your attention with the hey. He's saying stop, which is like a negative, right? When humans hear the word stop, it's associated with a negative action that we're doing. So it's immediately attention grabbing, right? Psychology. And then he's saying exercise. Okay. So most of the world, you know, exercises, I would say not everybody, right? But like, what exercise is it? It's intrigue, it's curiosity based. And then within three seconds, right on the the start of the fourth second, it then switches to B-roll, right? B-roll. So it transitions to another frame. This one popular exercise has been banned by the military. All right, cool. Has been banned by the military. What's the exercise? I want to know what this exercise is. And then look, at seven seconds, it then transitions to another, another like, uh, I would say like setting, if you will, right? So we talked about settings earlier, film your ads in different settings. They did this without even having to film their ads in a different setting. They just changed the setting for the editing experience, right? They went from in-person, hey, stop doing this exercise on a balcony, I think in Colombia when they filmed this ad and like traveling a world. Then they went to B-roll, which we talked about of the military while it's going along with the script popular exercise has been banned by the military yet. And then it goes to a presentation, an old school VSL style presentation, right? All right. So, and then the script is just so good. Seven out of 10 people out of 10 people still use this in their workouts today. And it's unknowingly, I'm like, am I the seven out of 10 <laughs> or am I the 3%? Let's find out. Recommended by trainers and doctors. Okay, cool. Now it's recommended by trainers and doctors. Is my trainer recommending this exercise for me? Am I doing this exercise? Right? So again, curiosity, intrigue, pattern interrupt, B-roll, transitions, right? All of those things are working to their favor here. And you can see it's only two minutes long, right? It's curiosity-based. And the best part about this ad is you actually don't learn what the exercise is until you click. Let me say that again. You actually don't learn what the exercise is until you click. So now you're really going to have some incentive to click, which is why the click-through rate over here is at 5%. What brand is this for? It's, uh, it's in the health and fitness niche. Cool. Um, sweet. Hey, so let me go next. So now I just showed you an example of why that works so well. Responsive YouTube ads now mandatory. All right. So what this means is basically you no longer have the option to just show your ads like as in a skippable in-stream ad. What's, what that means is like we, we, I showed you like the five seconds you can skip, right? That's that you can still do that but your ads will also show as display ads or discovery ads, as I should say. So what that means is you have to have more copy here, right? So this is an example of a display ad. So you know how you're on your phone, you go to YouTube, right? Or you're on your desktop, you go to YouTube. There's ads that show like in the suggested feed or on your phone, but it's clearly an ad, right? So let me show you an example, right? You're on your phone. This looks like a normal YouTube video, right? This is what your ads can now look like. So when someone clicks, they think they're watching a YouTube video. This is a skippable entry. And this is where you can skip after five seconds. This is also what it looks like when your ads are being shown outside of YouTube, because you can also show your ads. Now they make it mandatory where your ads will be shown outside of YouTube and on other platforms like Google, right? So you have to make sure that you have high converting copy right here. You have a headline and you have a sub headline, right? And you have a call to action. 
So you want to make sure that now with YouTube ads, you have a thumbnail that's attention grabbing. So there's an example right here. I'll show you another one, right? So this is an example of best practices. So this is one of our clients, boss, babe. They're, uh, you know, they basically teach, uh, you know, women how to become influencers with Instagram because that's exactly what they did, right? They built a business off Instagram. And so uh, we, and for all of our clients, but we have them create a unique thumbnail for each hook and angle, right? So one of their ads, the hook was, you know, um, basically Danielle, right? How she was able to go from uh, $30,000 in debt to $13 million in sales with Instagram, right? So you can see this thumbnail, right? If you saw this on YouTube right here, it would be pretty attention grabbing, right? As opposed to without a thumbnail, it would just be a random screenshot that YouTube selects for you <laughs> where your face is looking all weird. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't look like a YouTube video, right? So the user experience is dropped and then people aren't as intrigued to click on the video. So you want to have a thumbnail now for each of your YouTube ads. So you want to have a maximum of seven to eight words in the thumbnail, right? Less is more. You can see, you can very easily read these How to become a six figure influencer to get paid to create. It's very easy to read. If you have like a paragraph, it just wouldn't make sense. Let me know if that makes sense. Let's see. Very cool example. Thanks. Perfect. Yep. No problem. Um, and a cool tip here is you want the thumbnail to represent the first 15 to 30 seconds of your YouTube ad, right? So again, I mentioned this ad specifically, the hook was Danielle's story, right? How she went from 30 K in debt. I think the hook started off with like, I was 30 K in debt just three years ago, but now I'm, I've made over $13 million in sales using Instagram. All right. That's like, Whoa, like what say that again. Right. And so the rest is like self-explanatory for these, because in this video, she says, I'm going to show you how to get a hundred thousand dollars, Instagram followers in this video, step-by-step. And so you want to make sure it represents the first 15 seconds of the video, the hook. All right. So cool. Again, just to recap, we went over why most people fail with YouTube ads, how to write the perfect YouTube ad script to get clients booked on your calendar to get them to convert. We've also went over how to film your YouTube ads. And I've showed you a YouTube ad that converts right now with one of our clients, the Tap Brothers, and all the elements that we just explained in action and how to create thumbnails that are high quality and attention grabbing for your YouTube ads. Now we're going to kind of go into the nitty gritty here. All right. So if you're someone who um, maybe is overwhelmed by the technical side of things, right? The analytics, the conversions, the account setup, I'm going to give you the cheat sheet right here. So I'm going to give you exactly how to do it. And then you can just give this to someone on your team, for example, to do this for you or somebody else. Makes sense. So thumbnail the hook spot on. Thank you, Emmy. Perfect. So first things first, like we talked about earlier, you don't want to run the same, you don't want, you don't want to run YouTube ads to a Facebook funnel. Why? Because the YouTube platform is different than Facebook. So the traffic, AKA the people that are clicking on the video are going to do, they're just going to perform differently. So what you want to do is you want to duplicate your funnel so that it's only for YouTube ads. And this also helps you with like tracking because you just want to make sure that if you make like, for example, let's say your Facebook ads funnel is doing really well, right? You're crushing it on Facebook and you want to start running YouTube ads. But if you run YouTube ads to the same funnel that's working on Facebook and the YouTube ads aren't performing, you're going to wonder what's going on. The problem is you can't make changes to your Facebook ads funnel. Well, you can, but what are you going to do, right? What does that lead to? That leads to potentially worse results from your Facebook ads. So to avoid this completely, you want to duplicate your funnel so that it's only for YouTube ads, right? And then you want to link your Google ads and analytics together. This is very easy. It's free to create both of these things. It takes you two seconds when you type this into Google, how to create a YouTube ad or how to create a Google ads account, how to create a Google ad analytics account. And you, then you just link those. That's very easy. All right. You make sure you link those together. And then you also create a Google tag manager account to set up tracking and conversions, basically how to know when someone makes a purchase opts in, et cetera. All right. This is very easy to do. You can Google this on YouTube. You can find videos for this and you can get this done in like 10 minutes. You want to make sure that those, those things are linked together though. Then what we recommend to our clients and what I recommend to you is you create a new YouTube channel. So let's say right, you've never ran YouTube ads before, right? And let's say you want to eventually grow a YouTube channel, or let's say you have a YouTube channel right now that's organically growing. It has subscribers, but you want to continue. You want to grow your channel and get more views, get more subscribers, right? I recommend that you create a new YouTube channel to upload your ads to the new YouTube channel, right? Because this will prevent your YouTube ads from messing with your organic growth. A lot of the question and concerns that clients have is like, Hey, I have 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Does running ads mess with my organic growth or my organic reach? And the reality is like, 
there's really no proof of this, but a lot of YouTubers say that it does, right? And the Tap Brothers, for example, you know, we ran ads from their main channel. They have a million subscribers. They had 800,000 at the time we started working with them, but we didn't really see that, that stall of a growth from their, from their ads, right? But to avoid it, we just said, look, let's just duplicate your, let's just create a new YouTube channel and avoid it completely, right? So now we just have a best practice to always create a separate YouTube channel and upload your ads to the channel. The best part is, right? You can link both YouTube channels to your Google ads account, right? So you can set up remarketing lists, which means you can retarget people with your YouTube ads from both your main channel and your ads channel. So it still works the same. You get the best of both worlds. So just to avoid it from messing with your organic analytics, just create a new YouTube channel just for your ads. Does that make sense? I hope that wasn't confusing. And then, right, to, you want to have a Hyros, right? So Hyros, especially if you have a book of call funnel, is really, really good for bull bulletproof tracking, right? Maybe Rudy recommends something else. I'm not too sure, but we use Hyros. 90% of our clients use Hyros to, to avoid uh, over tracking because Google ads tracking is just not good. You want to have like a software like Hyros. Okay, so cool. Now let's get into the targeting. This is the fun part. All right. How do you find your clients on YouTube? How do you target them? How do you show your ads to them the next time they are on YouTube to get in front of them when it's the perfect time to get them to click? All right. So there's two types of targeting on YouTube, right? All right. Nice. Yeah. See, Rudy knows. <laughs> Hyros is definitely the best. Interest targeting versus intent based targeting. All right. There's two broad spectrums of targeting on YouTube. All right. There's interest targeting, and there's intent-based targeting, all right? You can target people based on who they are, right? AKA their interests, or you can target people based on what they're actually searching for, clicking on, or watching, right? So which one of those targeting options do you think is going to be better, right? Someone who's maybe interested in something that Google says, hey, I think this person's interested in this topic like yoga, right? Because they're visiting yoga websites, or people that are physically typing in, yoga classes near me, yoga instructors in Arizona, you know, uh, yoga, yoga, uh, coaches who can help me improve my form, right? People typing in those specific in, uh, intent based questions intent. Yeah. Both work by the way. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but especially if you're new and you're starting, you want to run YouTube ads, the easiest way to get better results initially and prime your ad account for scale is intent based targeting. All right. So what we do is to make this point really driven home. Again, I learned this from Tom Breeze because he explained this so well. He used the example of customer awareness levels on YouTube in terms of a brick and mortar store. It's very easy to understand. So for example, let's say you have a brick and mortar, a brick and mortar, brick and mortar hardware store, right? You own a hardware store. It's a physical store in your local city, right? You have three types of customers that go into your store. You have the checkout shoppers, right? The people that are at the cash register with their products in their hand from your store and they're ready to check out. These types of customers are warm. They're very, very hot. They're already in line to check out. They're ready to pay. The, they know about your brand because they're in your store, right? They know about your products because they have your product in their hand in the checkout line, ready to pay for them. So they know what you sell. They already know that you offer this stuff that they need. So the targeting here for YouTube is remarketing lists and YouTube audiences. So people that are already on your funnel, people that have already visited your website, people that are already on your email list, as well as people that are already subscribed to your YouTube channel, people that are already watching your YouTube videos, people that are already commenting on your YouTube videos, sharing your videos, you know, adding your videos to a playlist. These, they know about you, right? They know what you do they're very easy to get to convert because they just have a few questions, right? Like this guy over here, he's buying some, some screwdriver. He's like, I just don't know if this is the right screwdriver for me. And she's like, well, let me take a look at it. Right. And she's answering questions based on what he's, what are you going to use the screwdriver for? I'm going to use it to fix the leak in my faucet under my kitchen sink. Oh, well, yeah, this one's going to be the one because of this, this, and this, right? Okay, cool. Boom. That makes sense. He's over, like you're just answering a very few questions to get them to convert. Those are checkout shoppers, right? So that's why they're easiest to go after first because they're low hanging fruit. Next is the in-store shopper, right? These people are going through the hallways, right? They're, they're, they're searching for the product. They, like, they're obviously problem aware because they're in the store, 
but they're not sure, right? This guy's looking at this one. Is it this screwdriver? Is it the other screwdriver? I don't know. He's deciding right now. He's a little bit more cold, right? You know, you need to do a little bit more selling to get him to actually get into the checkout line. The targeting here on YouTube, these are keywords, placements, and custom intent. And I'll explain what these mean in a second. Window shopper, right? This guy's on the outside of the store. Who knows the hard, who knew the hardware store even sold shirts, <laughs> but he's, he's outside looking at the shirt. He's like, I don't know, man, this shirt looks pretty cool. It matches my style. I don't, I don't really need it. Do I want it? You know, these guys, eyes. he's like, you got to get him in the store, right? You got to sell him on, on coming in first. And so these targeting options on YouTube are like in market audiences, topics, affinities, and similar audiences, very broad. All right. And this is going to bring the point home really quickly really well. So we're going to only focus on these two types of customers for now to get you guys quick conversions, quick calls booked and quick clients. All right. So this is what it looks like, right? This is the timeline that we use. I learned this from Tom Breeze. Uh, no, not Tom Breeze. Sorry. Uh, Tommy Powers. When I was working for Dean uh, Graziosi full-time, um, I spent like $5,000 on YouTube ads. When I first started off, I made like $2,500 back. So it wasn't terrible. wasn't great. Obviously wasn't break even. Um, but Tommy Powers flew out to us and kind of gave me the blueprint to scale. And one of the things he taught me was the YouTube ads targeting timeline. I will say I've since updated it to be relevant to 2022. So it's different than what he taught me back then. So this is more updated to right now, right? But credit to Tommy Powers anyways. When you start off with YouTube ads for the very first time, you want to go after this, these audiences first. And I'll explain why. Remarketing lists. We already talked about that. They're already familiar with you. They're warm. They already know what you do, what you offer and what you sell. So you want to, so if you have people that are, you know, obviously on your list, you want to go after them first. Next is YouTube audiences. If you have a YouTube channel, you want to use that YouTube channel to your YouTube ads. You want to target your audience, right? Keywords. And I'll explain why keywords in a second and custom intent. But these two types of, let, let, let's say you don't have any people on your list right now. Let's say you don't have any audience. Let's say you don't have any following. Let's say you don't have any YouTube channel or any lists whatsoever, the targeting you want to use is keywords and custom intent. Take a sip of water real quick. Keywords and custom intent. Why? Because keywords allow you to show your ads on a wide variety of channels and videos related to your specific keyword. So for example, if you target a keyword of like, let's say calisthenics, right? For example, our clients at Tab Brothers, they do bodyweight workouts. Calisthenics is like another way of saying bodyweight workout, right? For example, your ads will show on channels who have videos that have calisthenics in the title, right? In the hashtags and in the description. So if you're selling something like Dan, where he's selling a lip balm and you use a keyword of best lip balm on the market or best lip balm in 2022, best lip balm for men, best lip balm for women your ads will show on almost every video that has lip balm in the title and probably on channels that are making videos related to lip balm. Because again, the keyword is in the title of the video. You can even see here. So this doesn't say it here, but this is like, think of the way this is broken out. This is actually a screenshot from YouTube specifically. So this is channels right here. And this is videos. So you can see calisthenics is the keyword. Calisthenics is in the title. Calisthenics is in the title. Calisthenics is in the title. And even though calisthenics isn't in the title for some of these, look at the channels these ads are showing up on. Calisthenics movement. It's not on a video that has calisthenics, but it's on a channel with the keyword inside of it. Calisthenics move is, again, Chris Herrera teaches bodyweight workouts. I know that because I'm into health and fitness and he does it. So you can also show your ads on a wide variety of channels that make similar content that probably have your customers. That's why keywords are so powerful, especially if you don't have any audience, any following, or any remarketing list to go after. Keywords are going to be your best friend when you start. Any recommendations on how to use YouTube ads targeting for self-employed freelancers for health insurance? Targeting self-employed freelancers for a health insurance quote. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like, in I mean, there's options where like, um, I mean, you can even get creative with keywords here and be like, um, uh, health insurance for entrepreneurs. Boom. Health insurance for entrepreneurs, health insurance for freelancers, health insurance for uh, self-employed business owners. That's how you would use it with keywords. There's probably other audiences you can use with like in market of like business creation. And then your creative would have to be very spot on with the qualifications, right? Like, are you a self-employed freelancer who's looking for health insurance? Like that's the first thing you would say in the ad. 
right? Anybody who's not a self-employed freelancer who's looking for health insurance, probably not going to continue watching that ad. They're going to skip it, which you want because you don't want anyone to keep watching. That's going to charge you money if they're not in the market for it. Let me know if that makes sense. Custom intent is next, right? So custom intent allows you to show, this is very powerful. So I'm going to, I'm going to go slow with this one. With custom intent audiences on YouTube, you can literally target people who are searching for specific keywords on Google. So if you create a custom intent audience of lip balm, right? And you put lip balm right here and you create an audience with that keyword, that means the next time someone types on, someone types in lip balm on Google, the next time they're on YouTube, your ad's going to show up before the next YouTube video that they watch or one of the next YouTube videos that they watch. So anybody who searches any of the terms that you put into a custom intent audience, you can literally show your ads to the next time they're on YouTube. This is very, very powerful. So I believe it was Chad. If you wanted to, tar tar to target people who are looking for health insurance quotes, you can put a keyword search term in a custom intent audience of best health insurance for freelancers, best health insurance for entrepreneurs, best in health insurance for self-employed uh, you know, business owners into a custom intent audience. And the next time that that person is on YouTube who searched that keyword, your ad will show up in front of the next YouTube video or one of the next YouTube videos that they watched. Does that make sense? <laughs> Do you guys see how powerful that is? Pretty cool stuff. This is intent-based validation. This is what we're doing here, guys. We are going after your lowest hanging fruit first. The guy who's picking the apples, you're picking your apples from the, from the lowest fruit branches, right? As opposed to trying to climb the tree, make it harder for yourself and go after this one or this one, you're going after these juicy, red, luscious apples on the very bottom of the tree that are within reaching distance. Your clients that are already searching for what you're offering and you're showing your ads right in front of them the next time they're on YouTube. Pretty sick. And now, okay, cool. That makes sense, Brian, but like, give me the stats here, bro. What does this actually look like? <laughs> I know some of you are probably thinking that, all right, cool. But like, give me some numbers. The analytical guys are freaking out right now. This is all emotional based, dude. Like this makes sense. It makes sense. But like, where's the numbers? All right. So here is a case study of exactly why this is so powerful. So before implementing the intent-based validation targeting strategy that I just showed you that our agency uses for all of our clients at adspend.com, a client came to us and they had spent $20,000 on, on YouTube ads. They were selling a info product. They had 52 purchases. This product was about, I think $47, right? So they were spending $373 to get one $47 purchase. Look at this though. The click-through rate is 1%. Brian, you said the click-through rate is, it's definitely not the ads, right? <laughs> you said you needed a 1% click-through rate. Well, check this out. After auditing their account and seeing like what's going on, we, we noticed that their agency that they hired to run their YouTube ads, which by the way, was a Facebook ad agency who was running YouTube ads, was using an interest-based audience. One audience that was an in-market audience of like advertising and marketing. They spent 20 grand to one audience testing this offer. And this was after one month of testing, 20 grand in one month, and it got them $373 purchases. Again, a $47 product is what they were selling. After we came in, within the first week, we spent to five different targeting options that I just showed you we used in intent based validation strategy. We spent three grand in the first week, and we got 32 purchases, almost the same amount, 20 less than what they got in a month in one week. And we did it for like, what is that? I don't even know. One fifth the cost, one fourth the cost, right? Look at that difference. 373 to 93, just off the targeting alone. All right. So I know I said earlier in the very beginning of this presentation, like tw the targeting is like the 20%. In this case, it was the 20%. Like just targeting alone was allowing us to help this client reduce their cost per acquisition. And now their cost per acquisition was like under a hundred bucks as opposed to almost 400 bucks. That's insane. But that's why this targeting works so well. And their click-through rate also went up as a result from 1% to 1.65. Why? Because we were showing their YouTube ads to the people that were already searching for what they were offering. 
right? Solutions to their problems, intent-based validation. So that's the numbers. Can you show how that shows up for a customer? A little confused about how custom intent works. Um, there's really no way to show how that, like there's no way I can show you how to, I mean, it's literally just like me showing you a YouTube ad because that's how it would work. It's basically like what you're doing is you're showing uh, for custom intent. You're just typing in a keyword such as how to run Facebook ads onto the custom intent audience, right? So anyone that types in the, to Google, how to run Facebook ads, your ads are going to show up just like any YouTube ad would the next time they're on YouTube. I hope that makes sense. Emmy. like, I think you might be overthinking it here. That's it. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcastic or not. I don't know. That's pretty good, man. Um, create these campaigns. I think that was sarcastic <laughs> campaign. Number one, broad keywords. All right. So now, okay, cool. All this is cool. Brian, this makes sense, but like, give me the, give me the, give me the, give me the secret sauce here. Right. How do I actually do this? Here's the campaigns you want to create. All right. Go to YouTube ads right now and create these campaigns. All right. So I'm going to give you the first five campaigns you can create right now, broad keywords, one to three keywords, right? So this is basically like, think of it like, uh, if you guys are familiar with like, um, Google PPC, like long, uh, short tail keywords, long tail keywords. Basically when I mean broad keywords, I mean, keywords that are like example, make money online. All right. That's a broad keyword. That's a lot of different things. You can make a, you can make money a lot of ways online. And you want to have at least three to five different types of those broad keywords in your first campaign, specific keywords. This is any keyword that's like from three to three to seven words in length. So like, uh, how to make money online in 2022, it's a little bit more specific, right? You want to have three to five of those types of specific keywords in your second campaign Cam com uh, campaign. Number three, competitor keywords, three to five keywords here. So like, for example, what's another way to get your lowest hanging fruit people that already have your audience and just put your ads in front of them, your competitors, they have YouTube channels, target their YouTube channels. The way you do that, what we found in the best way is to put their name of their YouTube channel as a keyword. So if your biggest channel, if your biggest competitor is like, I don't know, Alex Hermosi, who's very popular in the internet marketing space and the online marketing space, you would put Alex Hermosi, right? And you would show your ads on any video that's on his channel because it's his channel that's named Alex Ramosi. And you could also show your ads on any video that has Alex Ramosi in the title. People that are also making videos about Alex Ramosi, which probably also have your clients. So that'll be your campaign number three. Campaign number four, these are the custom intent audiences. So Emmy, actually to answer your question, all you gotta do is like find the keywords first. Like, any, like I, I, there's a plenty of ways you can do this, but you take those broad keywords, right? And you can put those into a custom intent audience. So you just combine those two. So those, you know, five, let's say six to 10 keywords that you did for the first two campaigns, you can just copy and paste those into a custom intent audience. And that's your fourth campaign. Same with campaign number five. You can take your broad keywords, your specific keywords and your competitor keywords and put them into another uh, audience. So anybody that's typed in any of these keywords and any of these uh, competitor keywords, you put them into uh, a custom intent audience. And then optional is if you do have remarketing lists and YouTube audiences, you can create more campaigns with those. So this is like just a guide guys, everyone's going to be different, but this is how we would structure it for you, depending on where you're at in your journey with YouTube ads. And these are the campaigns that will give you the best chance of success right out of the gate, because we're going after your lowest hanging fruit first. Right? So here's an example of what this looks like just to bring it to life, right? Let's make it stupid, simple. Broad keywords, one to three words, make money online, work from home, best online business. Those are broad keywords. That's what you would have for like campaign number one. And again, tailor this for your niche, for your business, for your offer, best lip balm, um, uh, organic lip balm, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know much about lip balm. <laughs> uh, campaign number two, specific keywords. Three to seven keywords, how to make money online fast, best work from home jobs, 2022, best online businesses to start 2022, right? More specific here. Campaign number three, competitor keywords. For example, if you're selling to this type of market, you would probably target people like Kevin David, Mike Bastille, Ty Lopez, I don't know, Rudy Maurer, right? <laughs> Tanner Chittister, uh, insert another popular person here. Just to give you guys an example of what this looks like in action when you go to create your campaigns. 
And here's a case study again. So we actually worked with the Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street himself. And uh, we actually, well, first of all, he actually, uh, and I quote, one of his, uh, one of uh, we, we worked with Jordan Belfort and basically they wanted something that could make them, they could spend $20,000 in and get $40,000 back. So we went ahead and made them a mini webinar funnel. This is just like add to opt in to free training to, you know, like offer page, right? Like a mini webinar, right? There's no like delayed timer and stuff like that. It's just the offer pops up um, on the VSL. And so this is for his straight line persuasion course, his straight line persuasion selling system. Uh, and we launched this exact formula that I just taught you guys, right? Day one, the results were as follows. We spent about 500 bucks, got 127 opt-ins to the free training. It was costing us about $3 per lead, which is pretty good, right? And we got a 0.89 click-through rate, first day of launching. After day seven, right, the click-through rate went up by about 0.4% and the cost per lead dropped by about half. All right, so this was after the, 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 the account had time to optimize using this system. And right after the first almost month, right, this is like the first two weeks, we spent about 15 grand, and we had a 1.7 X return on seven, eight X return on ad spend. So we spent 15, we made about 26 back one week later, right? Within the first 21 days, we were at a two X return on ad spend. We spent 20 grand made 43 grand back. So we literally did exactly what they said. I want you to, I want, I want, to, I want you to make me something that can spend $20,000 and get me $43,000 back. Boom. Three weeks. We did that. Now, of course it's short of Belfort, right? So he has a little bit of name recognition. We're not going to take all the credit, right? He's a popular person. So but this just shows you regardless that this strategy will still work because he's never ran YouTube ads before, right? So this is the same strategy we used. Cool. So we went over a lot, but I'm going to give you just a little bit more. And then we're going to be going on to the Q and a, I want to keep you guys here forever. Um, what you want to do, like I just proved is you don't want to touch anything for at least seven days minimum, right? You want to give the, uh, uh, you want to give the conversion actions, room to breathe and to optimize, right? So if you have a campaign that's working after seven days, there's two ways you can scale it. You can scale it vertically or you can scale it horizontally. What does this mean? Well, vertically, if you have a campaign that's on KPI, you can just increase the budget, right? Easy. Just increase the budget on that campaign. And you're going to find a sweet spot. If you increase the budget too much, your cost per lead, your cost per call will just go through the roof. Then you just lower it down from there. So you want to increase it vertically like, but steadily though too, right? So if you're spending like $50 on a campaign, like I don't see any harm in doing like just to a hundred bucks, right? Just doubling it. Cause it's not that much. And your reach isn't going to be like crazy. If it's $5,000 on a campaign, I would, you know, and you want to scale it, you could do it to 10,000, right? I mean, that's what something I would do if I was really just confident in it. So the point is though, is you can increase the budget. If you want to be uh, more strategic about it, you can scale horizontally, which is you just duplicate the campaign that's working. And then you change the duplicated campaign, the second variation of it, if you will. You can increase the budget on the second variation of the campaign. You can change the targeting inside the campaign. You can add targeting, right? So you can scale horizontally, make more campaigns as opposed to just scaling one campaign. So those are the two ways you can scale. And then how to optimize, right? So let's say you find a keyword that just crushes, like lip balm 2022, organic lip balm, whatever the case is you would want to put that keyword into what's called a custom affinity audience, which allows you to create basically an interest, like an interest audience, like a Facebook interest in Facebook ads terms. And this would allow you to reach way more people, right? Way more people because it's just a way bigger sized audience. And so that's an easy way to do it. You take your best performing keyword, you put it into what's called a custom uh, affinity audience, which is people who with any of these interests or purchase intentions, that's what you would click. Right. And, um, and you would be able to create a ba basically an interest audience off that keyword. Another way you can do this to optimize your ads with your creative, you can actually take your best performing keyword, right? So let's say it is organic lip balm and you could actually have organic lip balm within the first five seconds of your script. So you write a new hook with organic lip balm in the script. So for example, right. Tamara, who's a, a client of ours, she uh, sells Amazon FBA, right? She sells an Amazon FBA coaching program. And I noticed that she was targeting keywords like Amazon FBA or like she was targeting keywords of like drop shipping and e-commerce and stuff. And it just really wasn't getting a, a click-through rate that we wanted. It was like 0.75.
And I was like, man, we just need to get that click-through rate up to 1%. So I told her, hey, Tamara, next time you film an ad, tomorrow I want you to film, like don't do anything differently. Just film the first sentence with, um, you know, uh, the best way to make money with e-commerce in 2022 is, so e-commerce was the keyword. She put keyword in the first five seconds. She put e-commerce in the first five seconds of the hook. This led to a 30% increase in her click-through rate, which if you get 30% more clicks, how many more people is that to your funnel? 30% more, right? Which can potentially lead to 30% more calls, 20% more calls, 10% more calls, anything helps here, right? So if you have a keyword that's working really well, you can take that keyword and rewrite it into your script and then just film the, the hook, right? And then just edit, edit it into your already performing ad. And then another hack for you guys, and this is the last one I swear, <laughs> is you can go to check your placements to see where your ads showed, which you can do in YouTube. You can see where your ads actually showed inside of your campaigns. You can sort by conversions. You can see here, we sort by conversions to see which channels have the most conversions. And you can take those channels and basically just put them into their own campaign. You can also take their specific videos that are actually on their, uh, that your you know, offers getting conversions on with your YouTube ads. And you can just target those videos specifically, All right? So this is another way you can actually optimize even more because you're gonna find a ton of videos and a ton of channels that actually get conversions because they're probably in the same niche as you. And you can actually target those. This is where you can keep finding new audiences and new channels to target. And that's it for me. <laughs> Any questions? Man, that was stellar. And yeah, Thank I, you. I was be, I was being sarcastic because, you know, it's like if you're reducing CPA that much, um, you must be doing something right. I'm like what? Only you know, it was only like you know, three hundred bucks. Not a big deal to, <laughs> not a big deal to my bottom line. You know, it's good. Yeah, stuff. that was just off so, the targeting too. It's nice. So who has some questions for Brian? Cause I know you guys just got, you know, peppered with tons and tons of awesome information from um, someone who's just crushing it in our space. Yeah. Neil, what's going on? Hey, thanks. And uh, thank you for that, Brian. It was great. And I've learned from other people on YouTube too. And there's some things that I just didn't even know about. So I appreciate the, the new insights. Uh, my question, and you could ignore it in the chat. I wasn't sure if we were going to do live Q and a like this or not. Um, you were, you used the fitness example of the YouTube ad where it was just straight up curiosity. Like they don't even tell you what the exercise is in the, in yeah. the ad and that led to the 5% click through rate. Do you see people having ads that both provide value in the ad itself? to drive the traffic and also just to use straight up curiosity to drive the traffic to both work. And it just depends on what the funnel and the offer is and all of that. Yeah. Cause you got to think about it, right? Both work, but the vid the video sales editor that the tap brothers have on their page was, was where you found out why the exercises that you're not basically the, the exercise just for like, uh, I guess revealing it was, was the crunch right? Doing a, a typical crunch on the floor where you're crunching your abs, which is not very good for like most people's lower back, especially if they're sitting at the computer every single day, right? So their VSL on their sales page for their offer was around teaching people that the crunch was the bad move and that there's a better way to get lean, you know, build muscle with their rapid primal fitness program. So the ads were getting people to click over to the sales page where they would learn well, about the actual bad movement. And then they were being sold onto why their program would actually help them get the results that they wanted with avoiding those potential pains. So to be, to put it very simply, both can work that, that ad just worked really well because their video sales that are on the page was a tailored to like revealing it. Right. So if you, if you already have, like, for example, right, like you could give value on the actual ad where you're teaching them something. Cause like the easy way to describe it is like, what are the three common problems that your ideal avatar faces? Right. Um, there's probably three problems that always come up on a sales call that you can use in the ad. If you're struggling with uh, inconsistent lead flow, because you're tired of running Facebook ads that 
your ads become disapproved or your ad account got shut down or yada. Like I'm just, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the common problems and I'm giving them solutions with YouTube ads, this with YouTube ads, this with YouTube ads, this, and on this free training, I'm going to show you exactly how to overcome those problems with the solution very tactically. Right. So both can work hundred percent, Neil. All right. That's great. Thank you. It's just a matter of testing and seeing what works, but, but if both have potential, that's good to know. Yep. You don't have to be uh, just super intrigued and curiosity based. You can tell them, you can give them some value. And I think honestly, that's, that's the way I sell too. I like, I'm giving you guys a ton of value and I'm just like, like, Hey, you guys take it and run with it. Right. So that's the way I do it too. Great. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. hundred percent. Yeah. Also too, Brian, not having all your eggs in one basket. Oops. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean like that's for sure. Thing too. Yeah. It's, it's just always relying on one traffic channel as opposed to being diversified too. Yeah. So like, you know, all you guys hear Rudy say it all the time, talking about the different marketing buckets, right. And having different traffic sources in order to make sure that when one does begin to increase costs or, you know, the metrics, your KP, you're not hitting your KPIs that you have other standbys, right. Because it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when, right. Um, mm -hmm. Next, mm -hmm. next one, money, Mike. Is there any tool that helps with avatar research, Brian? Avatar research. Hmm. So I'm guessing I guess like an audience, audience insights tool that Facebook had for all those years recently got, did away with. Is there anything like that for, for uh, YouTube? Yeah. When I, when I hear like audience research tool, yeah, it's basically like, um, like a keyword research tool, for example, like even in, when you go to create it, when you have a Google ads account, you can actually go to audience manager and you can see like, for example, let's say you have, uh, yeah, you can use audience manager and you can uh, actually just search in the audience feature bar, like Facebook ads in, in this case, it's Google. And you can type in specific things like um, insurance or uh, life insurance or lip or like, you know, um, makeup. Right. And you can actually, populate a bunch of different audiences that you can target that Google gives you based off what that type of audience would be in the market for or searching for. And so, yeah, there's, there's a way you can do that within Google. I didn't show it in this training, unfortunately, but um, you can easily just YouTube that and you'll be able to see how to, how to populate those audiences. So one, one tool that we do use is um, keywordsearch.com. Keywordsearch.com. That's how you can actually find a bunch of keywords that are popular on YouTube, along with the search volume of how much, you know, search volume that keyword has on YouTube specifically to then know if the keyword is going to be scalable or not, right? Is it going to be too, too, too niche? So that's a good tool for keywords specifically, but otherwise you can just use the audience manager in Google ads. Nice, really good stuff. Anyone cool. else, any more stuff for Brian? This is your time. And he's, he's nice enough to give us his time. Hey, Brian, I just wanted to say thank you. And Emmy here, um, you just opened up a whole new world that I didn't know existed because I always thought I needed to build up my subscription base on YouTube uh, mm. before I could ever run the ads to it. And now you're making me realize that part was completely irrelevant. I can actually start ads tomorrow if I wanted to. And I think it might actually work uh, better for, for my niche. Uh, mm. so I'm, I'm a love and relationship coach and I see a lot nice. of my competitors doing really well on YouTube. And this is because I'm, I'm just starting my Facebook ads journey and I'm realizing a lot mm. of the stuff mm -hmm. that I want to say on Facebook is going to get shut down ASAP. <laughs> so mm. maybe I should focus a little more on YouTube and maybe split, do some, some experimenting there. So thank you so much. For sure. Yeah. hundred percent. Glad I was able to help. And that's a huge market on YouTube, obviously. So yeah, no, no YouTube channel, big, big subscriber base required. You can start tomorrow. Like you said. Thank you. That's of course. That really is a massive, massive critical point where I'm at right now. So that's really exciting. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll, be, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Anybody else? And if not, um, Brian, thanks a lot, man. Um, killer I, I do have a question, Brian. Oh, there's Marvin. Come on, Marvin. One quick question. And if, if you want to work with you, what, is, what are the requisites? What do we need to do, for example? 
Uh, just email me. It's just dependent case by case, right? So you can just email me if you're interested in that and we can, we can see if it, if it makes sense. Um, we have a done with you and done for you solution. So done for you obviously is a little bit more qualifi qualification based. Uh, done with you is where we teach you how to do it yourself, right? So exactly what I do, exactly what I just showed you, but like, you know, the, more of the details more and then you coaching you along the process. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. 100%. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it looks like um, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Dan Gosling asks, what about using four by five video on YouTube? Four by five. Is that the same as like 1980 by 1020? Let me see. Four by five. Or is that the Facebook dimension size? Yeah, that's the, hey, Brian, that's the, uh, that's the Facebook. So my dilemma is I've got a lot of good content that I've made for Facebook, obviously. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can you, do I have to like just reshoot stuff or zoom in, or can you get away with, you know, the, the blur effect on either sides of the, of the actual video that you sometimes see when it's um, in the, uh, the more horizontal format? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that they can work. I'm not going to say they won't work. They can definitely work. You can get away with the blur effect. I would, here's what I would do. I would test it. And if you're getting somewhere within KPI, like within batting range of your KPI, that just means that if you do optimize it for YouTube, where it's, you know, YouTube, where it's 1080 by, by 720 or 19, whatever, I forget. There's a, but basically if you optimize it for YouTube, right, it'll just perform better. Right. So, um, yeah, I would just test it first. And if like, if you're getting good KPI, you're, you're within batting range, then just change it later, re-edit it. And that'll be a little bit longer, obviously, but test it first, because if the messaging is good, man, and it's converting on Facebook, I think it'll work on YouTube, but then just see. And then if it does, you can only improve it from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good point. Thanks. Yeah. Great, great, great question stuff. for sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Brian. You are the man. Appreciate you very much. Dropping some wisdom and tons of info and and um, all that on our, you know, with our mastermind members who are all doing a really great job in their businesses. And any um, any last thoughts? Maybe a piece of wisdom that you know you live by day to day, and and then we'll we'll cut it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the biggest bottlenecks that's keep that keeps people from scaling with YouTube ads is not testing enough creatives, right? So if you're going to go on this journey and you're going to start running YouTube ads and you only film five YouTube ads and then they don't work, right? You can't stop there, right? You didn't really give it a full chance, a full runner's chance. For example, I'll always leave you with this because this is factual. When I worked for Dean Graziosi, keep in mind, if you guys don't know who Dean Graziosi is, he sold, he's been, he's been on camera for like the last 30 years, right? In the infomercial days. So when I worked for him full time, he filmed. 123 YouTube ads for one offer within three years, one offer, right? That's an average of one video ad per week that we were testing minimum. That offer was a free plus shipping book offer, millionaire success habits, which made close to $3 million just from the book funnel, just from the front end of the book funnel alone in front end revenue. That's not including back end masterminds, workshops, events, nothing. So if you really want to have success with YouTube ads, you have to be continuously uh, testing new creatives. You'll find one that works because guess what? Out of the 123 YouTube ads that we tested, about 12 of them made 80% of the results. And out of those 12, only about five of them made 80% of those 12 results, right? So I, I cannot stress that enough, right? You don't have to be filming, right, every single day but just keep that in mind if you really want to win with YouTube ads. It's all about the creatives because on average, one YouTube ad can last for as long as four months on YouTube and continue getting conversions. You saw the Tap Brothers, two years, four months, nine days that ad's been running. So it'll run. The longevity on YouTube is there. When you get a winner, you have a winner for a very long time, but eventually it'll start fatiguing. So again, if you don't get success with your first five ads, test test and test. If the great, if one of the best can do it on camera and he did it for, he did 123 variations, right. Then there's really no excuse for you. If you just test five and you don't get results. I, I love that. You just gave that as your piece of wisdom because it, I it's, it literally echoes 
everything that, you know, we teach with Facebook ads as well with Rudy. You know, we have a saying, it's called ABT, always be testing. Mm, yeah. You know? And and one of the reasons why you, like, exactly like you said, the reason why people, you know, fail is because they stop before the magic happens and they mm. aren't disciplined and consistent enough with their testing. So, mm. dude, I'm so glad that you said that. It's the absolute truth. And, and it's the, it's the clear distinction between those that are successful and aren't, you know, so appreciate your wisdom, appreciate your time. And, um, you guys make sure you reach out to him, whatever questions you have, he, he threw that in there and that's a great offer to you guys for added value and appreciate your time. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys for having me and, uh, have a great rest of your weekend guys. See ya. Take care.